Thank you so much for covering that. Now, an important question that is rather the more common entity, unfortunately, which is the metastatic pancreatic cancer, where in fact the median oral survival is just about a year time. Can you please walk us through your treatment paradigm here and also answer some of the important questions that would be any role of testing for NGS for somatic mutations outside of clinical trials? And of course, the choice of modified fulfirinox, nilirifox, based off of your study, and gemcitabine, napaclitaxel treatment options. Yes, thank you again. Uh, so for uh, assessing uh, frontline metastatic disease, I do think uh, comprehensive uh, genetic testing is, is warranted right. today, right? As in uh, October 2024, we uh, still are you know, in the realm, it's a relatively small subset of patients that will identify actionable findings. Uh, but I think the field is very hopeful that that is changing with, you know, RAS therapies entering the clinic. So while it's not prime time yet, but going back to the selection of chemotherapy choice, I think the factors are somewhat similar to localized uh, disease is uh, functional status, uh, nutrition, patient preference, and, you know, perhaps uh, this is even both in an academic and a, and a community setting, just, you know, how close or not you are to your treating center and the, the support uh, mechanisms available, because some of these, uh, you know, have significant toxicities and and that's uh, um, important. But typically it's multi-agent cytotoxic therapy as uh, our go-to approach in the metastatic disease and for fit people, once more modified fulfirinox. And uh, Nalirifox, as you mentioned, is recently FDA approved and guideline endorsed. And often a question comes up, when might one choose that over modified fulfirinox? And I don't think there's a black and white issue, but one that I keep in mind as I think about it is if a person has previously undergone resection and had adjuvant therapy, and then at a later time point, uh, their disease occurs, uh, it makes sense to revisit the regimen. It's been some distance. Maybe a logical consideration is to use a different version of a regimen. That, uh, so that would be one context and similar paradigm for locally advanced and then later disease progression. Um, we do also have to be mindful that our goals are you know, for the most part, non-curative uh, here. Mm -hmm. And again, really important to understand the person, their social supports and their individual uh, preferences. And, and some people will say, listen, I hear you, but, you know, something that gives me more, less more flexibility, more time with my family, less time in the clinic, and is a milder regimen. Uh, that can be a very, uh, of course, uh, legitimate uh, option. And I had a very, you know, kind of heartening discussion on this topic with a, a young man, and one might have imagined that that would be the person that would push the envelope to the to the end degree, but very thoughtful, uh, you know, reasons as to why that wasn't going to be the right choice. And so these are, you know, very important, very practical discussions. Eileen, thank you for touching on that. A common uh, scenario also ends up being a patient that ends up in our clinic with high bilirubin. In that scenario, do you lean towards dose-adjusted gem napaclitaxel? Do you uh, reach out for oxaliplatin in that settings? Because this is not an uncommon scenario in our clinic. Indeed, it's a it's a very common one. And there are two two contexts to this. The one that's the more common is in people who have obstructive uh, jaundice related to tumor or nodal disease at the head of the pancreas or in the port of the hepatitis, and that's a reversible consideration. Yeah. So there, uh, thinking about uh, biliary intervention, your inter Special radiology if it's not accessible endoscopically. But assuming that's a soluble problem, often would start for that individual who's otherwise well with Fofox and then scale up with uh, Arenatica and then modified Fulfirinox. The more challenging and problematic set of circumstances, and it's a very classic picture, it, usually a left-sided uh, body or tail primary and diffuse liver metastases. And there, it's not so much an obstructive picture, but it's a diffuse disease infiltrative process. 
that's usually a very concerning set of circumstances, prognostically worrisome, and a much more difficult uh, situation to 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 treat in many many regards. That's often a sicker uh, patient population. And there, uh, gemcitabine, NAB, paclitaxel, I think one has to go very carefully with because of poor metabolism, heightened toxicity. So usually in that setting, for me, it's always dose-adjusted Folfox to start and then very carefully scale it up if if one can get response. One is always hoping in, in that setting that maybe there's an underlying, you know, bracket, somatic or germline context that these uh, people will respond and, and sometimes they respond very well but often it's a it's a you know it's a kind of a spiraling um, challenging scenario that latter context.